Hey guys and welcome to another Macho Luco video. This is gonna be about the Vancouver Island Missing People cluster and uh, basically let's get right into it. Vancouver Island is located in the southwestern corner of the province of British Columbia. It is separated from the mainland of British Columbia by Johnston Strait and Queen Charlotte Strait. And uh, it's basically a beautiful setting, all right? Um, the case of Alma Hall and Raymond Hall was um, a case where they left their hometown in Saskatchewan uh, to visit uh, Alma's husband and Raymond's dad, Thomas. Thomas was employed by Was Logging at W Camp in Englewood at that time. And uh, according to some loggers in the area, the pair reached the waterfall and where they uh, were seen last on June 9th, no one has seen them since. After seven days of searching, nothing of the pair was found. No trace of them has ever been recovered. Annie Puglis, 43, missing from Alert Bay on April 19th, 1967. Again, not much was found. Kenneth Kuhn, age 5, missing from Alert Bay, BC on April 28th, 1967. And he was the great aunt of Kenneth Goon. There were no details available on her disappearance other than the fact that she was in Alert Bay to visit relatives. Kenneth Goon's disappearance nine days after Annie's triggered a 50 officer search that resulted in no tangible results. Yehudi Pryor, age two, missing September 23rd, 1974, Wild Duck Lake at Shawinigan Lake, BC. William Pryor took his two-year-old son, Yehudi, for some berry picking. Again, one of the missing 411 points. And at some point during the day, the young boy vanished. William yelled his name, searched for him frantically, but eventually contacted the authorities for help. Six days later, one last push was made to find a two-year-old. And the body of Yehudi was found four miles as the crow flies north of Wild Duck Lake. The boy's body was found in a thick brush next to Hope Creek. In fact, he was in a dry creek bed, according to the Vancouver Sun. It is surreal to think that a two-year-old was able to reach that spot where he was found on his own. According to a uh, October 24th, 1974 Vancouver Sun article, um, William and Anne Pryor were telling the truth about what transpired according to a lie detector test. Um, the case of Lynn Marie Hillier, age 2, missing July 24th, 1986 from Horn Lake, Parksville, BC. Colleen Hillier decided to take her daughter, Lynn Marie, along with her parents on a short vacation by Horn Lake, northwest of Parksville, BC. On July 24th, Lynn Marie simply vanished after leaving the lake cabin slightly ahead of her grandparents. Her grandparents and parents searched for her and contacted RCMP soon after they realized Lynn Marie was nowhere to be found. The RCMP canines were brought in, but they did not pick up a scent. Over 400 searchers were involved in the massive effort to find Lynn Marie. Airplanes with Fleer were unable to find a little two-year-old girl. Ernie Miner, the girl's great-grandfather, posted a $25,000 reward for anyone who could bring her in with no success. On August 19th, two prospectors were out to look for some hunting locations, roughly four miles away from Hillier Lake Cabin, when they found the body of a small girl under a log. The body was positively ad identified as that of two-year-old Lynn Marie Coroner stated that Lynn Marie died of exposure on the second or third day after her disappearance. However, both parents refused to believe that the little girl could have made it to the rugged location above their cabin on her own. There's no way. It just doesn't seem possible. It's so hard to imagine her making it there on her own, said Corinne. Like I said, including in this cluster is the case of William Pilkington, which I've already covered in a pre previous video. 
the link to that video is in the description. It's a, another heartbreaking case. As is usually the case um, of any cluster, the total dates span over half a century of all the cases. Um, even though Annie Puglis and Kenneth Kuhn went missing only nine days apart, the rest of these disappearances are the multiple years apart scenario that is just far enough apart to not draw public attention. And uh, this is a very important point, guys, because um, what that means is uh, whoever or whatever is responsible for these very strange disappearances is almost aware of the fact that if they were doing this en masse and, and in a larger volume, the communities in these areas would just would not have it. They would have an uprising. They would demand answers and they would not let off the the people off the hook so easily and unfortunately because of these huge gaps between these cases what often happens is as heartbreaking and as weird as they are uh basically what happens is um you know night falls on these cases and um they just you know after a certain mile maybe two three months they just go into the statistic books and as sad as that is and I, my heart goes out to the families um that's the reality that we ha that we are facing and this is why i'm here making these videos is because partially for many reasons but for partially is because i don't want this these people that went missing to just be a figment of some imagine someone's imagination this was real this happened okay so this is not something that should be forgotten so like I said, provide any feedback you guys may have on this topic, but the bottom line is this is not going away. And um, the last thing I want is for any one of you or any one of my family or friends to end up in David's books, because let's be honest, you know, if this is still continuing, some people are going to be victims. And how scary and, you know, freaky and, and, and um, frightening is that? very right um so um by me doing this by other people doing this contributing to this great community online that is youtube and and other you know um social media outlets let's keep this uh discussion alive um let's keep this conversation going um let's support david polides in his work Watch the movies. He's, he made two fantastic movies, uh, Missing 411 and uh, Missing 411, The Hunted. Um, both are available um, on uh, on YouTube. And they're not even... Uh, they, you don't have to pay to watch them, guys. Just watch them because he does a great job of um, showing you just how unusual these cases are. And he picks out really good cases that are not easily explained um by anyone by the authorities the authorities that he actually some people that were willing to go on video are are you could see it on their face how they're struggling to find words to um compartmentalize these specific cases that are featured in the in the film as opposed to a, a much more uh, common missing person case where either a body or a person is found and it follows a usual um a very common uh you know a uh, range of of uh occurrences whereas these specific ones that david does such a great job of isolating uh david polides in his books you can see how people very intelligent people that that know their stuff they know their search and rescue patterns they know their um their environment very well they know what works they know they have great equipment fleer you know satellite imagery they have they have all these um, skilled people at their disposal. They are struggling to grasp what is happening. And the struggle is real. Um, I have to commend David Pilates for continuing this difficult job. Because especially with the, 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 the untimely death of his son, with all this stuff that he has to contend with... Um, 
you guys you probably have seen very dis many dismissive comments on his videos and other videos that they're oh this is just a bear attack or a wolf pack got them and obviously that's where the mind wants to go because that's an easy explanation and how we can just make uh you know put this in a box and just walk away but david is fantastic at not letting us do that because he looks at the evidence and the evidence does not suggest any kind of animal attack any kind of suicide attempt any kind of uh foul play or criminal activity because that would have been uh, brought forward by the evidence and the evidence does not point in that direction so again thank you for spending some time with me thank you for looking at these cases uh from a critical eye please post your comments down below and i will see you in my next video have a great day.